Welcome back to Cardinates.org. Today we're going to be continuing with the three months of modal logic, a sequel to the 100 days of logic. In this video, we're going to be continuing with epistemic logic, looking at axiom five in doxastic and epistemic logic. So axiom five, as you may remember from my modal logic basics video, goes something like this. It's possible that A, it's necessary that it's possible that A, and as you may remember, there's a lot of controversy around axiom four, axiom five, S4, S5, and of course the modal ontological argument, the existence of God. The epistemic and doxastic axiom fives are going to be equally controversial and going to map isomorphically onto axiom five. They're going to look like this. So it's not the case that S believes that P, that means that S believes that it's not the case that S believes that P. Or, if it's not the case that S knows that P, then it is the case that S knows that it's not the case that S knows that P. These axioms are going to correspond to our alethic modal logic axiom 5. The doxastic axiom 5 claims that if it is not the case that someone believes a proposition, then that person believes that it's not the case they believe that proposition. Basically, if you don't believe a proposition, you believe that you don't believe that proposition. The epistemic axiom, on the other hand, says that if some subject X does not know that P, then that subject S knows that they don't know that P. If you don't know something, that means that you know that you don't know it. So, if it is not the case that Luca believes his tortoise is in its aquarium, then Luca believes that he does not believe that his tortoise is in its aquarium. If it is not the case that Heinrich knows that the ocean is salty, then Heinrich knows that it is not the case that he knows that the ocean is salty. So, there's a couple of corollaries that may help us out if you're having trouble understanding this axiom. Basically, either you believe something or believe that you don't believe it. Either you know something or you know that you don't know it. As a skeptic, of course, this axiom to me seems far too strong. This means that for all propositions, either you believe it or you believe that you do not believe it. it seems to me that someone in 2000 BC, for example, would neither believe the proposition Einstein's theory of general relativity is true, nor would they believe that they did not believe that Einstein's theory of general relativity is true. It seems that were someone proposed with that proposition, they would look at you curiously and not understand, even if it was translated into the correct language, and they understood the basic ideas. It seems to me that they would not understand it enough to have an opinion on it, especially if it was never brought up to them. It seems very strange to say that they do in fact have a belief, even if they've never heard of that. This would in turn imply that knowledge could not fulfill such an axiom as, on most definitions of knowledge, belief is going to be necessary. Now, because a lot of people think that axiom 4 is too weak, but axiom 5 is too strong, there have been a series of proposals to solve this, which we're going to look at in the next three videos. The first of them is going to be labeled axiom 4.2. Stronger than axiom 4, not as strong as axiom 5. In doxastic and epistemic, logic. So watch that video coming up and watch a new video every single day for 100 days here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical everybody.